104.5 the team 104.5 the team.com brady and guys filling in for levac on this president's day on the phone with jeff jacoby morning show host of the sports animal in knoxville tennessee been in knoxville for more than 30 years jeff give us the latest what is going on with this title nine lawsuit being filed against the university of tennessee well i'll tell you what it's um it's been a, a week uh, to say the least uh, a lot of conversation a uh, lot of uh, people talking uh, you know there's been a lot of things going on here in town uh, with the university and the women's department here for the last several months of course it kind of all started when pat summit uh, you know got her diagnosis uh, several years ago and just seems like uh, been running in a little bit of a cloud ever since <laughs> What is Peyton Manning's involvement in this Title IX situation? How has his name come up? Well, basically, I think the, the people that filed the, the lawsuit, and the lawsuit basically is, is similar to the one that was filed down at Florida State with Jameis Winston, is that it's charging that the university is not uh, going by Title IX guidelines when it uh, is uh, investigating uh, issues of possible sexual uh, assault and misconduct. Uh, I think the people who put the suit together trying to uh, give some semblance of uh, the fact that this has been going on for a long time, I think it's really unfortunate for Peyton that uh, they go all the way back, like four football coaches to 1996, I think is when this actually took place, mm -hmm. and um, and tried to, uh, to bring it in to show that this has been going on for 20 years at Tennessee. I, I don't think that's... That's really a fair assessment, but I think that's why his name was brought into it. They also brought up a, a football player named Nilo Sylvan, who uh, also had a, a run-in back way, way back uh, 15, 20 years ago. And I think they're just trying to show a pattern, and I think that's why they did it. And unfortunately for Peyton, it's uh, kind of put this – that it's kind of gone away and has been way in the past. I mean, it's 20 years since this happened. He's done a whole lot since then, and now uh, it's back in the in the forefront. 104.5 The Team, 104.5 The Team dot com on the phone. Jeff Jacoby, morning show host in Knoxville, Tennessee. Been in Knoxville for more than 30 years. And I know it was 20 years ago this incident occurred, but let's go back to 1996. You're there in Knoxville. What was uh, we look at Peyton Manning, this highly touted recruit, the son of Archie Manning. Was this known about in 96, 97? This was kind of just pushed aside, or was this a popular story just central there in Knoxville and is now blown up to national uh, discussion 20 years later? No, I, I think it was it was known here. Uh, it was known as the mooning incident. Uh, basically, there was a female trainer who uh, was in the, the training room with Peyton and apparently a track athlete. The story goes that Peyton was going to moon the track athlete and inadvertently kind of uh, got Jamie involved in it. Now, there are some things that have come up since then that, that question that exactly, but you know, you got to remember, we're talking back before the Internet, before, I say before the Internet, the Internet was around, but not nearly to where it is now. Social media was not around. Twitter was not around. Facebook was not around. I mean, it was one of those things where it was very easy, especially with Peyton and how he was revered here, to be passed off as just a, a very innocent uh, prank in a training room with a bunch of athletes around, and, and uh, it really wasn't thought to be that big a deal, uh, although it did come out later. Uh, Jamie uh, Witted at the time was her name, not right is how she's go, go, what's, what she goes by now. That was her ma a married name back in, in 96. Um, did get an undisclosed settlement from the university, I think, back at, at that point when she pushed on it a little bit. But Again, it is something that really hasn't come up here in a long, long time. So because the university and Dr. Nawright settled, legally nothing can come of this against Peyton Manning, right? I would not think so. I mean, they they came back in, in 2003. It came back up again when Peyton wrote a book and even made a um, – a reference to the mooning incident. He was, I think, pointing out at the time in his book that somebody of his high profile, if you make any misstep, you can pay dearly for it, and he brought that up as an example. Uh, apparently, when the original settlement was made, uh, there was an agreement that uh, neither one of them would ever talk about it again, 
And when this came out in the book, uh, uh, Jamie uh, Notright decided that uh, she had been that that agreement had been violated, and they went back to court. And that's where uh, a settlement, I think, and it was three hundred thousand dollars, was uh, given by the University of Tennessee to settle with her at that point. Uh, so that's that's the I guess really the last time that it did come up. But uh, you know, since that time, uh, it really hasn't been much. Jeff Jacoby, a morning show host in Knoxville, Tennessee, with us, 104.5 The Team, 104.5 The Team.com. Brady and Goss filling in for LeVac. And, Jeff, so this incident happens in February of 96, and it, right at the time it appears that Not Right says that that Manning, quote, placed his naked butt and rectum on her face. And then in August she she doesn't say that specifically. She says that there was some some inappropriateness, but that's not necessarily anything criminal. What is that? Is that true? Is that what her stance was at the time? You know, it's been 20 years, and to be honest with you, uh, most of what I'm recalling at this point, being the old guy I am, is, is stuff that I've gone back and reread here in the last couple of weeks with this, you know, with, in the last week or so, actually, with this coming up. Uh, you know, like I said, at the time, my recollection is he mooned her. And then when all this other stuff started coming up in, in 2003 with the lawsuit, that's where it was the first time I recall hearing about what you just talked about. Um, and I don't know that anybody other than the three people that were really there, you know, there's always his story, her story, and the true story, and I don't know which which is which, to be honest with you, and I certainly wasn't there, and I I, I would would hate to, to, to say who I believe or don't believe at this point, I, only to say that I think Peyton Manning and, and what he's done over the last 20 years kind of stands for itself. I'll uh, just say that. How were fans in Knoxville reacting to this story coming up again 20 years later? I, you know, I don't really know that that it's that big a deal here. Uh, it's the the deal with the the lawsuit that's been filed on the Title IX issue has gotten a whole lot more chatter than than the Peyton Manning part of it. Most people have pretty much you know passed it off as, "Hey, that was 20 years ago. What in the world are we talking about that?" That's been on our show the most most of the reaction. Uh, like I said, the the bigger conversation has been uh, the the lawsuit concerning whether or not Tennessee's uh, University of Tennessee's way of of going about Title IX investigations of possible sexual assault are, are are the right way to do it, whether they're they're with the law. Jeff Jacoby, morning show host of the Sports Animal in Knoxville on ninety nine one FM nine ninety AM with us one zero four five the team one zero four five the team dot com breaking down the. The, the lawsuit going against the University of Tennessee, of which Peyton Manning is now a part of that lawsuit. Jeff, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Jeff. Hey, no problem, guys. Have a good day.